Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and it is going to be cold where I live tonight, probably where a lot of you live. I have to go, as soon as I finish this video, I've got to go to the store. I gotta get some duct tape. I gotta get some cardboard. Might have to go to the liquor store for that. Some cardboard. Because I gotta cardboard some things. I gotta wrap pipes. I gotta work on some things like this. I'm actually holding a measuring tape right here. Um, all right, back to the real world. Brad Garling House is in Davos. I got several clips here. I want to play some of them for you. As we started this conversation, I am very optimistic about the crypto market in 2024 uh, because of those things around putting compliance first. I was just thinking of is this cold here. Imagine how cold it is in Davos. Making sure we focused on solving real problems for customers and not just the speculative cycle, I think will put the whole industry in a really good trajectory. So, you know, we have been cash flow positive the last couple of years. Uh, you know, that has been a unique place in the market and allowed us to invest not only in the core of Ripple, but also in acquisitions. And even, you know, recently you may have, we've now repurchased uh, over a billion dollars of stock from our shareholders. Uh, that's quite frankly, because it is not an immediate term priority to go public. Billion uh, dollars. You know, in the United States, trying to go public with a very hostile regulator that has to approve your S1 that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. You know, Coinbase obviously had their S1 approved and now the SEC is suing them for doing things that was outlined in their S1. That is crazy. Now, as I mentioned, there's a hearing tomorrow in the U.S. about some of that. But I think it's in... Folks, we have a government mafia is what... Th that's what we're talking about now. More on that in DAIXRP.com. ...of uh, why would we want to subject ourselves to an SEC that is openly hostile to this industry? Sort of parked to the side at this point? Yeah, or, I mean, or are you I, I looking don't think elsewhere I, outside the U.S. for a listing? I, I mean, yes to all of those. Okay. Uh, I don't think oh. about an IPO as an exit. I, I think about an IPO as a step in the journey. Uh, but honestly, a lot of people go public because they need to raise capital. Yeah. Look, Ripple's folks, not really. They're gonna. There, there's Ripple shares that are going to be on the Link to platform this week. I was told. Those and Circle shares. So I have a gut feeling that this Ripple IPO thing is going to come out of nowhere. Nobody's going to see it coming. Brad Garlinghouse did say 2024 is going to be big. He said it this morning. So go check out Link to. It's in the description of my video. You can get, you'll be able to get equity there. We need to raise capital. And so it, it is not a short-term priority. We're obviously keeping that option open, uh, and we'll evaluate it, you know, as, as time continues, and we'll evaluate it again as we have uh, new regulators sitting at the United States SEC. And I guess some of it's market dependent as well. Last year was an interesting, uh, you know, space with the, in the tech world more broadly. There were a lot of secondaries, buybacks, but very few IPOs. The market wasn't obviously very great for them. So I guess it's also, you know, how, how the broader markets play out as well. For sure, that's part of it, and it, you know, yeah. not just the public markets, but also the crypto markets. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think uh, Coinbase's stock is in a much stronger position now than it was a year ago, but uh, obviously well off its highs from uh, three years ago when it went public. So I, it's just not a huge priority. We have a lot of capital, very strong balance sheet. We can continue to play offense through an acquisition point of view, invest in the business. You know, as we started Ooh, this conversation, I am very optimistic about the crypto market in 2024. Oh, I like the optimism. Um, okay, there's several other crypts. He was on the stage with uh, Caroline Pham, who, this is a good reminder that she was in Ripple's offices not too long ago. Here's another good clip. There may be a little bit of overlap, but I don't think so. Judge Torres's opinion, what she wrote is, XRP is in and of itself not a security. So I feel very good about that. The SEC then asked for approval to appeal that decision and that was denied. So, I mean, like the SEC has lost consistently in this case. Uh, there is a piece of the case that continues around institutional sales because investment contracts where Ripple sold XRP to in institutions who wanted to speculate. The irony there is, you know, again, the SEC's one of their missions is to protect investors. How many of our institutional XRP sales 
did they lose money? None. <laughs> so like, what, what are we arguing about? What are we? Like, anyway, say round of applause for Brad Garlick, our CEO of Ripple. Judge Torres's opinion, what she wrote is, XRP is. In All right. And then we got this one. Check this out. So, Brad, are payments still the best use case for crypto assets and technology that undergrids it? And what payments can lead to in terms of other use cases? Well, for me, I mean, Ripple started with payments. Uh, actually, when I joined the company nine years ago, there were three different groups within the company working on an identity solution, a payment solution. Uh, and I'm forgetting the third one right now because that was a long time ago. But it, we really, it was like, hey, let's focus on one where there's a clear... It's solving a real problem. And look, while we've had a dent, uh, maybe we've made a scratch in that market, it is a massive market. And I'm sure many people, by virtue of sitting in this room in Switzerland today, have had the experience of sending money overseas. It is still high friction, high error rate, it's slow, it's expensive. And you know that's the opportunity to use these technologies to actually make it much simpler, much faster, without sacrificing some of the core principles around KYC or AML or what have you. So. I think the payments opportunity remains very large. Uh, it will continue to make progress. And when I say that, I mean both Ripple and the industry at large. There's other people approaching in different, you know, some are going after consumer-based solutions. Ripple's very much focused on the enterprise uh, and the infrastructure around that. There are, I think, going to be other use cases that are profound. Uh, you know, I think the fact that there's now an ETF approved in the United States with major institutions like BlackRock leaning in is a uh, further validation, but I think we need to make sure that we're focused on utility. Uh, some of the things I'm sure that people in this room have heard talked about, you know, tokenization of real world assets and democratizing access to the participation in those markets, I think is very real. Uh, whether that's commercial real estate, uh, you know, and some are working on identity-based solutions and even, you know, voting-based solutions. I'm certainly not an expert on those things, but. I, I think the blockchain-based solutions are, are here to stay, and uh, I think in the coming years you'll see more and more real-world use cases gain. There you go. He's, he's uh, mentioned the utility. Isn't, isn't that what Mon Monica Long said, is that this year would be the year where, where we would go from these speculative runs to more like utility? Makes you wonder. Then here's another one. ...that has been slow and painful, and I think... Look, I think with an election coming in the United States, uh, there will be some changes that happen. I, don't, I think the current chair of the SEC, I think, has been exercising a political agenda, not a good policy agenda. And uh, I think that will shift, uh, just a question of when and how. Uh, so we'll see what happens. All right. Let me see what else we got. Then there was this one. This is about the XRP ETF. Listen to what he says. Uh, there were a couple of interesting things after that Bitcoin ETF uh, was approved in that statement. One, and I paraphrase here, was effectively Gary, Gary Gensler saying, just because we allowed the Bitcoin ETF, don't think we're now going to allow a bunch of other crypto assets. The second interesting thing was the price of Ether skyrocketed immediately after on hopes that there could now next be an ETH ETF. Um, what are the chances of that? I think it's a certainty. I think Is other, it? I, I, I'm not going to put a horizon on the time, but I think there will be other ETFs for sure. An XRP I, one? I, there will be other ETFs for sure. Wait, so now we have Larry Fink and Brad Garlinghouse who can't talk about an XRP ETF. But, but an XRP one? <laughs> <laughs> I love this game we play. <laughs> Look, uh, I am very that's optimistic. The last time I, lost, I, lost. I, just, Boy, I am <laughs> The sad real part of that reality is we have a Bitcoin ETF only because a U.S. court said to the SEC, you're being arbitrary and capricious in your applyment of, of your applica application of the law. What would be sad is if every ETF had to go through that same journey and for Gary Gensler to get smacked down by the U.S. court system again. That might be, do you remember might be necessary. When, do you remember it, you know, when Craig DeWitt, I remember showing a video on this channel, Craig DeWitt, who used to be with Ripple, when he said that he thought that bit, only Bitcoin and XRP would have clarity. Do you realize, folks, that Bitcoin, you know, you can call it clarity. It's not legal clarity. XRP is really the only one with legal clarity. What if XRP and Bitcoin were the only two ETFs approved this year? and got to stay that way until all these others went through lawsuits.
And at some point, I think Gary Gensler won't be the chair of the SEC. And that would be a good thing for Here's why right. that thought went through my mind. Is Brad Garlinghouse just made the comment. He said, now look. He said, Bitcoin has only got the ETF because of a lawsuit. It was because of the Grayscale lawsuit, where they said that the SEC did not have a faithful allegiance to the law. Well, guess which other lawsuit the judge said the same thing? You know, that XRP lawsuit where XRP got regulatory clarity, the only legal regulatory clarity. <clears throat> and they said, the judge said that the SEC did not have a faithful allegiance to the law. How could the SEC not let someone who applied for an XRP ETF get one? Because there's a, there is a court case, just like there was in the Bitcoin thing, but there's not a court case in anything else. I'm going to skip over a couple of these things. I want to show you this. this. This was interesting to me. I want you to think about who has not had lawsuits, folks. We literally have, we, we face what I call a government mafia now is what, what we're looking at. Who, here's who hasn't been sued. Tether, Ethereum, Bitcoin, e, FTX. None of those were sued. FTX was not sued until after the exposure of the fraud. Then, they, then the SEC went after it. They worked with them until then almost like a fraud was uncovered that they already knew about. You get my drift? Well, this is suspect as hell right here. I've never understood why Tether has been left to just go, okay? It, it tells me that it is a government project, period. Um, <laughs> over what, look at this guy, over what they don't serve U.S. clients. That doesn't stop the SEC. That doesn't mean, that doesn't stop the SEC ever. Um, so here's, um, why hasn't the SEC sued Tether is the question I'm asking. Listen to this guy. This is Cantor Fitzgerald. Well, and we should talk a little bit about crypto too before we finish. Oh, well, let's squeeze it in. What would you like to say? So remember when gold ETFs started? They were very exciting in 04, and it kind of stayed steady. There was all this hype that everyone was going to buy gold and, oh, come on. So I think Bitcoin ran up. It's kind of going to stay steady. But when the halving comes, it's going to start to rally and grow. So Bitcoin, I think, will grow. And there's a company that I like called Tether. It's a, it's a stable coin. And, you know, I manage uh, many, many of their assets. And the Tether Holdings is the name of the group. And the group, I want to say it here with you, from what we've seen, and we did a lot of work, they have the money they say they had. In the last attestation, they said they had 86 billion of assets and 83 billion of liabilities. And I've seen a whole lot, and the firm has seen a whole lot, and they have the money. And so there's always been a lot of talk. Do they have it or not? So I'm with you guys saying uh, we've on seen the it and they have it. So spot Bitcoin ETF, do you think that's going to restore confidence to the whole sector given what we've seen take place in the last 12 months? No, that doesn't have anything. That's this just thing has been allowed to go survive. for a reason. Why please. are Americans? And I got something for Nick Carter. Uh, I'm going to drop a video right there for him. I've got a video of Valerie Chapinick from the SEC saying very clearly that if anything even touches the United States in this whole crypto, thing, if it even has touches the United States, the SEC can sue and claim jurisdiction. So this guy needs to. What get a wake up call? Do do a little research. They could sue Ethereum or Tether or anything else that's ever touched. You telling me Tether hasn't touched U.S. customers? Ah, please. Um, all right, now we're going to go into daixrp.com, and uh, what we're going to talk about in there. Uh, it, I'm going to I'm going to show you some more of a video. This is a government mafia. That's what we're talking about. Government mafia. That's exactly what we're talking about. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Government mafia.